I'm a surfer. Not a particularly good surfer, relative to the fact I've been doing it for about 25 years now, but I'm very keen. And I want to start by telling you about my most memorable experience surfing. I was on a beach in the southwest of France with my brother, 14 years old, and the waves were enormous, crashing right into the shoreline. We had not seen anything like it before growing up in the southeast coast of the UK. Now, feeling brave and a little bit foolish, we dared each other to paddle out into these waves. Somehow, I managed to make it through the surf zone and beyond the point at which the waves were breaking, losing sight of my brother in the process. Now, having reached the break point, or beyond the break point, I suddenly realized how big these waves really were and freaked out. All alone, with these mountains of water rising up and crashing down right next to me with the sound of thunder, I thought I was in real trouble. And this experience went on for about 30 minutes until there was the most unusual lull in the seas. They just went calm. And I took this as an opportunity to paddle like a madman back towards the beach, making it up onto the dry sand and seeing my brother just before the next set of monstrous waves came through. Now, to this day, nearly 22 years later, that was the best surf I've ever had in my life. And I didn't even ride a wave. The reason why was because it opened my eyes to how dynamic and energetic the ocean can be. And from that point on, I was hooked. So surfing's had a huge influence on my life. It's taught me things about the ocean and the atmosphere that I wouldn't have learned otherwise. How storms are formed, how these storms interact with the surface of the ocean, creating waves, how those waves propagate out from the storm, sometimes traveling thousands of miles before interacting with the coastline, refracting and diffracting around its bathymetry before finally breaking. It's taught me things about the tides, about coastal morphology and metrology. I loved it so much, I even went on to study at university, where I learned more and more about oceanography and eventually became a marine scientist. Now, for me, and for many others, certainly down here in Cornwall, surfing is a way of connecting to the ocean. It's a way of connecting to the natural world. But there are a whole range of other outdoor recreational activities that do exactly the same for other people. Whether that's on the ocean, on rivers, lakes and estuaries, on the land, in the mountains or in the forests, on the ice, on snow-capped mountain peaks or glaciers, and even in the atmosphere. There is a whole body of knowledge suggesting that outdoor recreation helps connect people to the natural world. Now, in the 1970s, it was hypothesized that outdoor recreation can help promote environmental concern. And this led to a whole lot of research testing this hypothesis. Now, a review of this work in uh, 2009 showed that, yes, there is an apparent link. Outdoor recreation helps promote environmental concern in participants. Furthermore, there's been recent evidence to show that childhood experiences in nature through things like outdoor recreation, have a lasting effect on their pro-environmental attitudes when they become adults. So not only does outdoor recreation help connect people to the natural world, it also helps raise environmental concern. And we should be concerned. The United Nations state climate change as one of the major issues facing our society. We have been modifying our land, cutting down our trees, and pumping our atmosphere full of greenhouse gases, and it's having a huge influence on our climate and on our environment. Now, in order to manage this change and understand it, we need better societal awareness, and perhaps outdoor recreation can play a role in this. But that's not enough. In order to manage climate change, we need to monitor it. We need monitoring systems in place that are capable of recording accurate data on temperature of the oceans, the atmosphere and the land. It could be how we've used the land over time, the composition of the atmosphere, the amount of snow and ice on the land and in the sea, the height of the sea, the colour of the ocean. 
We need monitoring systems capable of recording accurate data on these indicators so we can track the state of the environment in response to climate change. Now, unfortunately, there are regions of our planet that, where we don't have a lot of data on these indicators. And ironically, it's some of these regions where environmental recreation can take place. For example, the nearshore coastal ocean. It's notoriously difficult to deploy standard oceanographic equipment in this region. It's energetic, it's dynamic, the tides are coming in and out, the waves are breaking. And yet, this is one of the most important parts of our ocean. It contains very high levels of marine productivity, very high levels of marine biodiversity. It's where the coral reefs, the rainforests of our oceans live. It's where our seabirds forage. It's where many of our fish species spawn. And it's also where we, as human beings, interact with the most with the ocean, through things like outdoor recreation. Now, staying with the oceans, the vast blue oligotrophic gyres, these have often been referred to as the ocean's equivalent of the deserts on the land. They're enormous. They constitute around 50% of the planet's surface. They are hard to access and consequently difficult to sample, but they are where some um, venturous sailors go. Now, there's no doubt technology has revolutionized how we monitor our planet. We're putting more and more satellites in space with better sensors capable of recording data at higher temporal and spatial resolutions. Autonomous observations have changed how we understand the oceans and the atmosphere. The development of drones and their use for environmental sampling in some regions. Low-cost tech has expanded. Arduinos, Raspberry Pis, mobile phones have changed how society functions. We're now more connected. Environmental sensors are becoming cheaper, smaller and more accurate. And this is opening the door to new platforms for environmental sampling. For example, tagging has radically improved our understanding of the polar seas. Now, one of these platforms could be us. If we take two popular marine water sports, diving and surfing, and we look at where they occur, we can see that they are distributed around the majority of the world's coastlines, at least in tropical, subtropical, and some subpolar regions. It's been estimated that there are millions of surfers and millions of divers globally regularly going in and out the ocean for fun. Well, why not tap into them as a resource for environmental sampling? Well, that's starting to happen. It's already been shown that surfers can collect useful information on ocean temperatures. This is a smart fin. It's developed by a group in San Diego in the US. It's the same size and a similar weight to a standard surfboard fin, but within it is an environmental sensor package that measures temperature, motion, GPS location, and can transfer all that data wirelessly onto data servers. Thanks to the SmartFin team, there are over 100 surfers now around the world using these fins, myself included, and there's plans to make more fins and integrate new sensors on the biology and the chemistry of the ocean. Divers have long been collecting environmental data, sometimes without even realizing it. There are some standard dive watches that contain temperature and pressure sensors, and it's been shown that this data can be useful for environmental monitoring. There have been efforts to integrate environmental sensors into fishing equipment. Here is an example of an oceanographic chemistry package that was integrated into a stand-up paddleboard for measuring the effects of ocean acidification in shallow, previously undersampled regions. Now, this concept of integrating environmental sensors into sports equipment, demonstrated here in the ocean, is just as applicable to other outdoor recreational activities in other realms of our planet. On the land, in the forests, in the mountains, on the ice, and in the atmosphere. To sum up, outdoor recreation helps connect people to the environment. It raises environmental concern and awareness, and it can also be used to help monitor the environment. Key factors needed to manage climate change. Thank you.